Right, so analyzing a case at stage four using a breakthrough strategy is pretty rewarding for both the patient and you. And there are a few simple things you need to do in order to get there, right? So the first one is keep it open so that the case can flow. Two is use strategic questioning at key points as the patient is revealing the data or the story to move to the next stage. Three, always tap into the subconscious and unconscious states through their dreams, through their hobbies, and through their childhood fears. And four, use the reference books and tools for analysis that are suited to stage four when analyzing. And that's all you need to get to get a case to stage four when the patient is ready and use the breakthrough strategy. But okay, let's go a little bit deeper into the details with the help of this case study so you can directly plug into this in your next patient who is ready to go there, all right? Now, for more information on stages and the breakthrough strategy, please click on my video on the three strategies to build your practice. It's a free video. I'm going to provide a link below. All right, so this is a patient who I saw in 2011. He's a 25 year old male and he was a homeopathic student when I was um, a trainer in the college, right? So he came with this diagnosis of sarcoidosis. This has been three, three weeks. He's been diagnosed just three weeks ago when he saw me. And he said there is pain and swelling on the medial side of the ankle on both his feet. Now, the lungs show bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. And he was given a prescription of prednisolone by his rheumatologist. And he wanted to try homeopathy, right? I could see there was purple reddish discoloration. And he said it's very hot and inflamed and he's aggravated in a hot shower or a heater. So, you know, I asked him, tell me about this, what's exactly happening? He said, there is intense pain and the pain hits me at night. I'm so scared. The worst thing is my feet are not going to work and I'm not, you know, able to walk anymore. You know, are my organs getting worse? What's happening in my heart? What's happening in my lungs? So at this point, I could see that he was scared. So I asked him, what's his worst concern? And he said, not knowing what's going to happen is the biggest thing right now. He says, I'm very upset. I cannot play my sports, which I enjoy doing the most. And, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen to you. So for me, this is very interesting because the way he explained those pains hitting him at night and what he doesn't know what's going to happen, that's his worst concern. And you realize our disease is nothing but our deepest fears, our deepest state being expressed through a real pathology, right? So he he goes on further and I'm going to really talk what the patient said in his verbatim and then I'm going to talk about my thought process, all right? So he said during the CT scan, it really hit me hard. What is the outcome? Is this lung cancer? It's very hard to control my emotions. I stopped the steroid because I was feeling very dazed. I was stoned. It was slow. It was wishy-washy. My eyesight was not focused. My heart palpitations were so scary. Now remember, he's at stage three because he's directly going into the connections. So I asked him a question to find the mind-body correlation because I know he was slowing and he was ready to go there. So I asked him, how did it start? What exactly happened? What was the trigger? And then he said, dad's having an affair. My mom calls me all the time and I couldn't do anything about it. It just contradicts everything that we were brought up with. So I asked him in what way? And he says, it was a very strict childhood we had. If you do something wrong, you are in trouble. Not with his actions, but with his affair. And I think whether the past wrongs and the consequences were valid. My dad belted me on my foot exactly at the same place where I have the inflammation now. Small things which, which didn't warrant reprimand. We were not allowed to step out of line and out of behavior. I spoke with dad. I told him we were not bad people. Why were we, you know, why were there such strong disciplinary measures when we weren't bad to start with? Now, he stepped out of line completely without consequences for his own actions. Me and my dad never had a good relationship. When I was 13, he wanted to be my friend. And then I said, you cannot be a dictator and a friend. Once I was big enough and strong enough, I did not take it. I would have belted him back if he belted us. 
Uh, physically, I used to fight with him. I don't take your rules and I rebel. So you see what's happening. His dad is him. You know, when we hate or love somebody, it's a part of us we are not ready to accept. It's like it is the compensated part. The disowned part of him is his dad. So I will understand now the other side of him through his dad. This is the core of stage three and four analysis, right? So straight away, I go into the dreams. I asked him, what are his dreams as a child? And then he said, I was on a ship and there was this strange looking man in charge of that boat. So he used to have this dream recurrently and it was like in a ship and he was a child laborer. He said, I was working all the time on that ship, but it was never enough. It was never okay. Whatever work I did was never really completely done. And this person on top of the deck was watching us all the time. And we were down below the deck. He made decisions, who was right, who was wrong, but I never got the answer. It was very scary. This person was very sickly. He was not normal. He was very old. He told us to do things not knowing what you were doing. You never could find out that you've done a job well or not. And the problem is that with this really intense, scary feeling, you are stuck on that boat. You are in the middle of nowhere. You're working for no reason and you just can't get off. You are isolated. You're restricted. You are tapped, trapped. And then every now and then he would just pop back on top of the deck and then he could be down and then up and down any time. This person was very scary, very sickly. I remember just the green color. The dream was all in green. It was seasickness. There was some sort of authority. I didn't know what the outcome was. There was suspense because anytime anything could happen, I had to be constantly alert. So I asked him, what was the exact fear? He said, it's the fear of being attacked. As a child, you're more vulnerable. Something there you couldn't do anything about there. But as an adult, it's different. When you are big, you are double the size, you can hit head on. So that's again the thing, you know, that he was weaker as a child and then he was stronger as an adult. And now you see the connection between his dad belting him as a child and the dream on the ship and then somebody, something coming from behind, which has a common theme here. So at this point, I asked him about other fears because there was this intense fear in the dream. He said, I don't like walking in the dark. I always felt somebody was behind me. It's the same thing. It's not knowing what is coming. I'm constantly checking, always. It's a constant feeling that somebody's coming and what was going to happen. I could be, I should be aware of it. I cannot ignore it. You have to be constantly prepared to run, to fight, whatever. In my mind, I'm aware and ready for everything. It's like an animal or something that you can't see, but you know, he can see, that animal can see you, but you can't see it. It's following you, watching you. It has the control, but you don't have the control. It's an invisible enemy because I can't see it. So my hearing, my eyesight are very, very sensitive. You can't see this animal, but he's there. It's, you know, a branch moving or a leaf moving straight away. I know I'm so precise. My eyesight is very good, even in terms of coordination. Once a guy threw a ball at me from the sides and I could catch it even before I could see it. I was so good at sports. So he is a professional football player. And he said, in sports, I was a forward. I was kicking towards the goal. They didn't believe I could catch them. I could see it in my head even before I could catch them. No matter what, I chased them down and I did it hard. I broke their noses, I knocked them down, I winded them. So this is interesting, this is his hobby, this is his life. He's, so I asked him, how do you catch them? Because this was an interesting dynamics here. He said from behind to the side, I lunge forward at them. The whole body goes with the movement when you grab them. It's a very short distance I go because the longer they go, the less likely I can catch them. Endurance is my, not my strength. I'm exhausted in five minutes. I'm best at long jumps, at sprinting. Everything is best when it's short, fast and hard. Running behind that guy and my arms around him, he's trapped. He won't get out of me. Once he's caught, he's gone. You know, tackling, kicking, catching, I can do everything well. 
I can judge the timing. I jump up in the air at the right time. It's so easy for me. I see the ball. I know how to be where I have to be. It's an inbuilt mechanism in me. I'm so aware. The aggression is all the time. I enjoy the challenge of me versus them. So you see, this is a source talking. For the first time, the animal story is complete. Exactly the description of how the animal hunts in nature. It is the hunting mechanism of the big cats. Slowly stalk the prey until they're close enough, then you pounce and grab them and win them. They can't escape. So this is the time I ask him, tell me about animals. And he says, um, my name in Arabic means a leopard or a jaguar. So his dad is Arabic and his mom is um, New Zealander. So it's like, you know, he, he has both names. And he says, it's all about strength and courage. That's what my name is. I watched videos of them, the big cats, when I was growing up. So I, I ask him, what do you like about them? And he says, they are the boss. You cannot mess with them. You know, it's like, I'm powerful. I'm the king. You don't come near me. If you do, there will be consequences. I'm the dictator. So can you see this whole dynamics between him and his dad? His dad is a dictator, so he is. There were consequences. His dad has to have consequences for the wrong that he has done, just like he had consequences when he was little. So these are glimpses of the core of his case. Obviously, this is not the whole case, um, but I just gave you interesting data and important bits and pieces to get the whole story together here, all right? So let's go and look at the analysis and the whole comprehensive understanding of this case. So as you can see, this is his core state, to be on top of his game, control, alertness, coordination, power, agility, strength, confidence. This is what he wants. And what is this disease doing to him, the sarcoidosis? The pain suddenly attacks at night. How interesting. It comes out of nowhere. He's being overpowered. He's lacking coordination. His eyes are blurry. He's losing control. He's losing energy. It's like, you know, his survival against his disease and him. It's that against him who is winning. This is the theme of big cats. So as I was looking at the big cats and the themes of them, there are four big cats in the Panthera group. We have the tiger, which is Panthera tigris, lion, which is Panthera leo, jaguar, which is Panthera onca, and leopard, which is Panthera pardus. Now, as you've seen, he's touched the souls at stage four. At this stage, you do not repertorize. You directly go and you check the language of the prover and the language of the patient if it's a proved remedy. There is no proving, then you go and check the source of the animal in nature. All right. Now, fortunately, there was a proving of these four remedies at that time. And I was reading all these provings and I found the theme of Jaguar, Panthera Onca by Olga Fatula. Fortunately, she had proved the remedy in 2010. I saw this patient at the end of 2011. So he said in the proving, uh, the whole state of the proving was about being watched, about being persecuted and a lot of suspicion, right? This is like I'm, the provers felt they were followed out of place. Something could harm them. It was a feeling of unease, a feeling of, you know, suspicion, hurriedness, and aggression. This is exactly the feeling he was describing in the dream as a child or when he was being followed. It's the same suspense. And that was the key for me. The suspicion and this real uneasiness, the churning, the sickly fear in the feeling in the tummy and something, somebody is watching me. I'm not in control. They are in control. This man up there on the top deck and I'm here on the down, you know, in the lower deck. And he was the person in authority. He was following me. I didn't know whether I was doing right or wrong. He could do anything to me at any time. He could attack me. The pain attacks me suddenly at night. These big cats, they always hunt at night. So I go into the Metro America of Panthera Onca. 
Gunshams mammals repertory and Metro America is perfect for stage four when you're understanding the kingdoms, especially the mammals and the big cats. So let's check it out. So I'm going to go into my remit analysis in HomeQuest and I'm going to look at Panthera onca, which is the jaguar. And we're going to get a reverse Metro America of this remedy. Now, interestingly, this remedy is only found in the mammals repertory. It is not yet, you know, in the complete or the, any other repertory. Um, so look at what we get here. The very first theme is alert, vigilant, and watchful. He has to be constantly alert, constantly vigilant, and watchful. That is the theme of Panthera Onka. It is about somebody will come at any time and harm me. And you have to be constantly in that state of, you know, what can happen at any time. There is arrogance, haughtiness, assertion in speech. This is common to most big cats, the authoritative aspect. But there is this aspect about betrayal and deceit, claustrophobia, feeling restricted and trapped. But there's more. It is, you know, the miasm of Pan Panthera Onka, as you realize, it's about control and losing control. That's what it talks. It's near syphilis in the zone of cancer. There is competitiveness, confidence, controlling others, desire to, dictatorial. This aspect about honor and dignity. Who is the dominant person? Who is the top guy? This is exactly what was happening in the house. Who was the top guy, the father or me? There is this constant hurriedness and hastiness, intelligence, intrusion, intolerance of. You cannot mess with them. Irritable and annoyed, king-like. That is what he likes about the big cat. They are the boss. They are the leader. But there's this constant mistrustfulness and suspicion of something could happen at any time. There is the royalty, again, common to most big, big cats, but there is this perfection, discipline, idealistic attitude. That is exactly what the father also had. Show off desire to, solitary, intolerant of others, independent, speed desire for, quite interesting, his love for sports, stealing, grabbing, fear of, fear of loss. We didn't see this in our patient. Stressed out, capacity beyond, Power, strength, stubborn, obstinate, territorial, space one's conscious of, touch aversion to violence and brutality. Let's go and read the Metro Medica. So this is proved by Olga in 2010 and Hike again in 2010. So if you go and first look at the physical characteristics the mental characteristics and the physicals. You have high self-confidence. No one can dare stand in my way. Holding on to rightful position and place. Invading my space. You know, they want to harm me and drive me out of my rightful place. It's about this territory in, you know, in his dad's home. And he had to get out because he was being intruded upon. Deceiving and stealing away his space. Suspicion watched, followed, persecuted. This is exactly that man on the deck was doing the authority of person. They want to harm me and drive me out of my rightful place. Aggression and violence. Breaking open the skull, splitting the skull, piercing, pulverizing, cracking open. One little blow, you finish. This is exactly what it does when he's playing football. Remember, one blow and the guy is winded. No one dare stands in my way. Thrifty, paranoia, internal anxiety, constantly trembling, needs to be alert all the time with unease, suspicion, great haste, love speeds, totally controlled, reserved, perfectionist. And then you can see it's a personality similar to the lion and the tiger. These are more well proved. They are more represented in the repertories. Hence, Jaguar will never come up in your repertorization. That's why you need to understand the kingdom, you know, analysis. And that's why you need to understand how these big cats and themes of mammals and big cats. So there is more anxiety. There is more caution. There is more extreme fear of losing his place and losing control. And hence, this desire to hold on very tightly. Control is a very big theme. Yeah. And that is the cancer. 
So if you check the periodic table of the mammals, what you can dedu deduce is that Panthera tigris individuals are more in column 11, whereas the Panthera onca are more in column 12 and 13, which means they're similar to Mork. So if you go to the mammalian chart by Dr. Gansham, the myism and the periodic table chart here, if you look at the Felidae and the Jaguar, you can see it's more the Cancer myism, whereas the, you know, the tiger is also Cancer myism, the lion is more syphilis, the leopard is more tubercular, and they are in row six of the lanthanide, so more like the king, you know, the gold series. And within the gold series, as Dr. Gansham mentions, the tigers are more like column 11, which is the aurum personalities, whereas the panthera onca are more 12 or 13, which is more like the morc personalities. Yeah, and that is the difference between the tiger and the jaguar, even though both are cancer myism. So they keep patrolling around their territory all the time, the jaguars. In the wild, they do a lot to maintain the control over their territories. Consequently, in the human context, the jaguar personalities are observed to put in tremendous effort in order to save their humans and retain their positions. They have this feeling of impending loss. Anything can happen at any time. This is exactly the phrase our patient uses. So they tend to be watchful about everything. They hold on tight, make a superhuman effort to maintain their positions. They are suspicious, they don't trust anyone, anything and anyone can cheat on you. Okay, so we decided to give him Panthera Onca, 200C, and he comes back 15 days later and he says the swelling in his feet has reduced by 75% straight away after the first dose. There was no pain at night and even now when he steps his, you know, on the floor, he cannot feel the pain. The discoloration is back to normal, so the inflammation is gone. And generally, he's also feeling better. He says the fatigue is still there if I exert, but the coordination is coming back. Then I see him a, him a month later and he says, I feel much more better. My ankle is back to normal. There is no discoloration. Now, the heart symptoms, the palpitations and the soreness in the liver is also reducing. The general energy is back to normal. I'm emotionally much better. The rheumatologist said not to exercise, so it's really annoying. Why can't I exercise? It's really getting well. I can walk now. I walked yesterday for eight kilometers and I was fine. So he had a lot of interesting dreams and there was a lot of healing happening through the dreams. And he followed regularly for about a year. And the remedy was repeated as and when required during that time. At the end of the year, he was completely in remission. And he's still in touch with me. I saw his wife later on. He continues to remain well. And that's it. So honestly, if the patient is at stage four, then all you need is to ensure that they can flow. Now, this is just one type of strategy, but this is, you know, the stage four breakthrough strategy. But the strategy you choose depends on the stage the patient is at. There are so many ways to the top of the mountain. There are different types of patients who could present to you in different ways. All you have to do is match them at that stage and give them the best potential of homeopathy. So you have to ensure that you keep expanding your toolkit. You keep expanding your toolkit at all four stages so you can find the best approach that works for them, right? You can find a link to Dr. Gansham's Mammals Repertory and Metro America below. He covers these you know, big cats and all the mammalian remedies in great detail, as well as their families. He's basically covered the entire spectrum of the mammals and the proving metromedica, more than 100 remedies in there. So I highly recommend you get the book. You can use it through the free HomeQuest software as always, right? So hope you like this video and hope you've got something out of it. And let's get out and give our patients the best of homeopathy this week.